We're still talking about square roots, but I want to teach you a different method. I call, I'm going to call this the Mr. Anger shortcut method. It's the method that is taught in Saxon math. If uh, you know anybody or maybe one of your parents has been through the Saxon math. Um, but we're going to take some of the same problems as these, but show you another way of doing them. Let me start as an illustration by taking the number 24. And I want to find the square root of 24. All right. So we, what we do is we break this down to all the prime numbers that make up 24. And so first off, I think of 3 times 8. But 8 can be broken down to be 2 times 4. And then 4 can be broken down to be square root of 2 times square root of 2. Now I'm going to take all of these and put them in one row. Okay, So square root of 3 times square root of 2 times square root of 2 times square root of 2. 3 times 2 is 6, 6 times 2 is 12, 12 times 2, I get 24. All right. Now, every time we see two radicals that have the same number underneath, okay, they kind of like come together and the number pops out from under the radical. Let me illustrate. Square root of 5 times square root of 5 would be the same as the square root of 25, and the square root of 25 is 5. You see, I can just skip that step and just say, oh, square root of 5 times square root of 5 is 5. Okay? Let's do a shortcut again. What's the square root of 7 times square root of 7? The answer is 7. Okay? Uh, let's take a bigger number. <clears throat> square root of 17 times the square root of 17. I don't need to multiply it out. Who cares what 17 times 17 is? The point is that because these two radicals are the same and I'm multiplying them together, the number that's under the radical pops out. And so this would just become 17, okay? <laughs> there we go. So in taking the square root of 24, I've come up with all of the prime numbers, leaving them under the radical. And now I see that the square root of 2 and square root of 2, that pops out and I get a 2, okay? And then square root of 3 times square root of 2, I leave that under the radical and get square root of 6. So the answer for the square root of 24 is 2 square root of 6, and we really should put the plus or minus in front of it, okay? Now let's go back, and I'm going to take... <coughs> some of these problems like we had here. Let's take this 32 for instance. 32 is 4 times 8. I'm going to leave them under the radical. 4 times 8 is 32. 4 is square root of 2 times square root of 2. 8 is square root of 2 times square root of 2 times square root of 2. Okay. So I have 5 square roots of 2 all lined up here. And let's just check it. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. Times 2 is 32. All right, so we're good. Now, square root of 2 times square root of 2 pops out. Square root of 2 times square root of 2, the 2 pops out. Pop! All right? This one is left by itself. And now I can multiply 2 times 2 and get 4 square root of 2. I think this method is easier and faster because you can you break you're breaking it down to all the prime factors instead of trying to think of one big perfect square and then seeing what's left over. Let's take it with the number 54. All right, that would be the square root of 9 times the square root of 6, the square root of 9 is square root of 3 times square root of 3. The square root of 6 is square root of 3 times square root of 2. Okay? Uh, this should be a 3, not a 2. Okay. <laughs> So 9 is 3 times 3. So the 3 pops out. Pop! And these are not the same. So we just put them back together and leave them under the radical. And that is the answer that we had doing it the other method, plus or minus. Okay, But this method works great when we are dealing with really big numbers. Uh, let me look here at the book real quick and see if I find one. On page uh, 38, okay, I'm going to take a big one like 363, okay? <clears throat> 
363. Let's see. What number will go into that? Uh, square root of 3. Okay. And if I divide 3, I'll get 121. And the square root of 121 is square root of 11 and 11. Okay. And now these two are the same. You see that? Square root of 11 times square root of 11. And so that pops out. And the answer then would be the 11 square root of 3. Okay? Anyways, that, this is a method that will work no matter what the numbers and no matter how big they get. You can always break it down to prime factors, see which ones are the same, and those two come together to pop out. Whatever doesn't pop out stays under the radical, okay? If that helps, great. If not, just stick with the method that you learned in the pace.